Hey there, you're listening to the Generations Church Podcast. We pray that the Word of God today will challenge, change, and channel you into your God-given destiny. Now let's get started. Today, let's talk about having a new mouth. With, with new mouth, I want to talk about the power of our words. Somebody say words. If you've been to enough Chinese New Year dinners, you, have in, you probably have enough low sang. And at every low sang, what do you do? <laughs> Besides messing up the table, you say nice things, right? You, or you, yeah, uh, Kenji and Fungi get pregnant, or something like that, okay? Right? Yes. Ah, with triplets, okay, whatever. You say, you say nice things, right? Prosperous things, good things. The power of our words. Now, I want you to hear this properly. I am not trying to preach a prosperity gospel faith movement message. I'm not saying just speak things to, into being. Like, oh, it's not like, if Fanny gets pregnant, it's not because I said it on stage. It's because Kenji and her did the work. Faith without action is dead. So you want life, you've got to have faith, but you also must act. Amen, Kenji? Fun? Okay, great. Um, <laughs> so, if they do get pregnant, I pray they do because they really want kids and it's not because I said it. Oh, wow, power. pastor was so powerful. Wow, it's just, just manifesting, just speaking to being. I want a Porsche. It's not, it's not one of those messages. I'm not preaching that. Okay? But the Bible does speak about our words. Okay? So, don't hear it from the perspective of like prosperity gospel. Speak it, name it, claim it, and you get it. Not from this perspective. But our words do have power. Words have meaning. So when I ask the question, is the child good or bad? You're forced to think in those terms only. Because words have meaning. But if I ask a different question, then you think in different terms. So you see how words can change meaning? Some words are not word people I know. Some words, ah, my gift of, my, 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 my love language is not, not words, lah, it's gift, lah, it's true, whatever. Acts of service. You know, acts of service is also a word. I mean, like, it's acts of service. You, you have to use words to describe the thing that you feel. Amen. Words have meaning. And we have to have intention with our words because it has meaning. It has power. Amen? So, premise. There is power in words. There is. That's why we don't just call someone names and put labels on them. Oh, you stupid. We don't just say that. Because it has meaning, it has power. Okay? God spoke the world. He could have drawn the world. He could have used AI. He could have used some coding. The coding he used was his words. Amen? God spoke the world into existence. He said, let there be light until today there is light. You do realize God created light before He created the sun. He spoke it once. Let there be light. And there's light till today. The concept of light. So God spoke the world into existence. God created us in His image. So we carry His DNA. We also speak words and we must realize that there's power and meaning in our words. There is power in our words. What power? The power of life and death. And again, I'm not saying just if you wish someone to die, they'll just die. We're not preaching witchcraft here. We're not preaching prosperity gospel. I'm just saying there's power of life and death in those words that you speak. Even in the words that you think. Amen? Even the words that you think have power. And with great, how, great power comes great responsibility. Heard that somewhere. And by the way, all of you are talking right now. We are accountable for our words. I may not hear what you're saying right now, but God hears every word. He's keeping an account. Those words you're thinking about somebody, God knows those words. He has kept an account. We are accountable for our words. Romans 14.12 we are accountable for every action, every word. Amen? We are accountable to God for every word that we say or think. So, 
we really need to listen before we speak or type. <laughs> Keyboard warriors, beware. And when we speak, we want to speak grace and truth. Why? Again, because there's power of life and death in our words. Amen. And our words are the overflow of our hearts. What's in our hearts comes out through our words. Sometimes, even when we don't realize it. Amen? So, since our heart is the source, our hearts need a solution. A heart transplanted by God. So, at the end of the day, it goes back to the heart. We'll get there by the end of this series. So, today, let's address a few things. Number one, first point, there is power in our words and it's the power of life and death. Amen? What is power? Power is the ability to do or act, capability of doing or accomplishing something. That means our words have the power to accomplish things. Our words have the power to do something, to make something happen. Now, I don't mean just, the, I don't mean like, give me an A and you get an A. <laughs> I don't just mean speaking it, but when you have that words, that concept, that meaning is in your head, it moves you to act accordingly, Yes. And the word power in Greek is the word dunamis. And the word dunamis is rich and packed with meaning. It has the power to influence. It has resources. All of this is in our words. Amen? So, the power of the words we speak is far greater than we realize. So, what I want us to realize today, by the end of this message, is that we realize that our words really do have power and we need to be a bit more intentional about the words that we choose to use. Let's look at what Scripture has to say. The, po the power of our words for bad. James chapter 3, verse 6 and verse 8. The tongue also is a fire. Look at how the Bible describes our tongue. It's like a fire. And fire can be used for good or bad. It can cook you a nice, good steak or burn your house down if you don't cook the steak properly. <laughs> um, but the power of our words for bad. Look at that. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole person, sets the whole course of his life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. But no man can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. This is the potential of our tongue and our words for bad. The potential. It doesn't have to be this way. Next scripture. Proverbs 9, 11 verse 9. With their words, the godless destroy their friends. With your words, you can destroy people. What about the power of our words for good? Proverbs 25 verse 11. The right word spoken at the right time is as beautiful as gold apples in a silver bowl. I don't know if you understand that reference. Like, who, who has gold apples in their silver bowl? But whatever, it just means very good. <laughs> the right word at the right time is beautiful. It's great. Proverbs 16 verse 24, Gracious words are a honeycomb, sweet to the soul, healing to the bones. Gracious words. Power of our words for good or evil. Proverbs 12 verse 18, The words of the reckless pierce like swords, but the tongue of the wise bring healing. If you're reckless with your words, it can hurt. But if you're wise with your words, it can bring healing. Proverbs 15.4 Gentle words are a tree of life. A deceitful tongue crushes the spirit. Therefore, in summary, the power of words. The tongue has the power of life and death and those who love it will eat its fruit. Proverbs 18.20 uh, The tongue, in, in, well, in the New Living Translation, it says the tongue can bring death or life. Those who love to talk will reap the consequences, good or bad. This author, pastor, preacher said this. Words give life. Words bring death. You choose. What does this mean? It means you have never spoken a neutral word in your life. There's no word that you use in your life that is neutral. There's no such thing. It's either or, okay? Your words have direction to them. If your words are moving in the life direction, 
they will be words of encouragement, hope, love, peace, unity, instruction, wisdom, and correction. But if your words are moving in the death direction, they will be words of anger, malice, slander, jealousy, gossip, division, contempt, racism, violence, judgment, and condemnation. Your words have direction to them. Somebody say direction. When you hear the word talk, you ought to hear something that is high and holy and significant and important. May God help us never to look at talk as something that doesn't matter. It matters. There is no neutrality in the words that we speak or even type. It's moving in either one direction or the other. It's our words either move in the direction of life or in the direction of death. Therefore, our words either build or destroy. They either heal or they kill. I pray we realize that. Amen? Because words have power, words have meaning, and it's moving one direction or the other. Which direction are your words moving in? Whether it's words that you typed, or you sing, or you say, or you think. I mean, a child comes home with, I don't know, bad results. Oh, what do you say? What do you say? <laughs> or a young person in church comes to you and say, I messed up. I made a huge mistake. I've done something I should have done, pastor or leader or friend. I, I messed up. I, I, sh I should have stopped when I, when I should, but I didn't. I, I, was, I gave in to temptation and I, I messed up. There and then we have a choice. What do we say to that young person who messed up? I told you so. Why didn't you listen? You were always destined to be this way. I knew you from the moment I met you. Blah, 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 blah. And that rose words is heading one direction. Or do you say, ah, it's okay, don't worry about it. That also will move in one direction. I just want us to be a bit more careful and intentional and godly about our words. Amen? 20th October, 2020, sometime back. Um, so my son, Zion, then was five years old. And I can't remember the exact situation anymore, but I remember the question because I recorded all these, all these things down. Some of it is online, some of it is in some of my notes. Uh, it was a conversation. I, th I messed up. It was daddy who messed up that day. And I asked Zion, Zion, do you still love daddy even though daddy was naughty? I asked him that. Zion, do you still love daddy even though daddy was naughty? And then Zion said, yes. And I said, but why, Zion? And then he said, because you do that, daddy. Because even when I am naughty, and even you scold me, you tell me that you still love me. Oh, it was some conversation a long, long time ago where he messed up and I told him, Zion, that's wrong, that's bad, you're going to get punished, but I still love you, okay? And then fast forward, he remembers. Why do you still love me, Zion? Because, Daddy, you do that. When I'm naughty, when you scold me, you still love me. So I love you. Words have power. Amen? So number two, first, we must realize there's power in our words. Number two, we are accountable to God for every word. We are accountable. Does this bring you any memories? <laughs> this is Zion's depiction of, next slide please, Spider-Man. With great power comes great responsibility. Amen. <laughs> it's not a scripture by the way, if you think, oh wait, in the Bible. Huh? It's not, it's not, it's in the Bible of Spider-Man. Romans 14, 12 tells us, so then each of us will give an account of ourselves to God. We will face God and give an account of every action and every word. Matthew 12 verse 36 says, On the day of judgment, people will give account for every careless word they speak. It's crazy. Nowadays with, the, with Facebook and X or Twitter and thread, wow, it's so easy, man. It's so easy to make comments. It's so easy to like, boom, 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 boom. Oh my goodness, I can't believe it. <laughs> Some people will go public based on a rumor. Not even verified, not even confirmed. They'll go there and make statements. It's crazy. People do that. And we don't realize God is going to hold us accountable even for every careless word. So we can't say to God, oh God, I didn't mean it. Every careless word. Oh God, I didn't mean it that way. Every careless word. Oh God, I was, I was high in emotion. I was angry. And I, just, I just said it, but every careless word. Oh, after this, we all go back and check all our Facebook history, right? What did you say? What did I say? <laughs> the past one year, I've been very quiet. I used to post a lot more, but 
I feel like, ah, oh, accountable for every careful and careless word. Got to be careful. Ecclesiastes verse 12, chapter 12, verse 13 to 14 says, that's the whole story. Here now is my final conclusion. The wisest man who ever lived said this, fear God and obey His commands for this is everyone's duty. God will judge us for everything we do, including every secret thing, whether good or bad. What does this mean? This means there's no conversation, no social media comment, no text should be on autopilot. You don't just let it happen. You don't just let loose. You don't just like a loose cannon. We need to ask for God's guidance, wisdom and empowerment so that our words please Him and so that we will not have to give an account for careless words on the day of judgment. Amen? power of our words. The power of our words. It's not easy. We, 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 all, we all learn patterns. Uh, we, we, we say things that we've heard before. You know, our previous generation say things to us, now we say it to the next. But it's, it's, got, to, it's got to reset somewhere. Amen? It's got to reset somewhere. It's got to, we've got to make an intentional choice and say, you know what? Because before our words leave our mouth, the words was in the mouth and it's, it doesn't just, it's not diarrhea, it's not like, <laughs> cannot control. <laughs> I have to learn it. Amen. Let everything that has breath make a comment on Facebook. Oh no. Sorry, uh, what Bible did I read? Let everything that has breath curse your neighbor. Let everything that has breath just loose. No man, let everything that's breath praise the Lord. That's what this mouth is for. That's what, the, that's what our words are for, is to build and edify and grow and develop. Amen? Amen? <laughs> so I pray that as a church, as God's people, we become, I don't know, sometimes we'll mess up, sometimes we will let loose one or two words. Sometimes we will, in anger, we will say something we don't mean or we don't really wanted to, we didn't really want to say, but we say it anyway. But as much as we can, with God's help, with God's grace, with God's strength in, upon our lives, we ask God to help us. Amen. Um, every day now, I pick Zion up from school. He sits in my car and I ask him, this, Hey! What do you do well today? When I first started, it's like some strange thing to him. He's like, Daddy, watch too much Peppa Pig. Daddy, he does this on purpose. He knows he's having an accent. He's like, Daddy, I'm having an accent. I didn't do anything well today. But I'm trying to ch- see, that's a mindset. That's, that's a, like, so what do, what do I do well? Because I don't know, our ancient mind is trained to like, well means straight A's. Well means like, I strike lottery or something like that. Well means that. But I'm trying to change mindset to my words. I said, Zion, what do you do well today? I didn't do anything well that day. I said, well, you lost your water bottle yesterday. You found it today. That's well. That's normal that day. No, no, that's not normal. Normal is you keep losing your bottle. <laughs> you go to Zion too, and you go to Lost in the Corner. Yeah, three out of ten things is Zion's things. He once brought a Minecraft sword this week. Green and black in colour, like green, like bright green. That one also can lost away. The lost and found corner in the office. I guarantee you, you go this Monday, lost and found is something belonging to Zion is there. He's left his taekwondo and karate belt before, all lost. So I said, Zion, what do you do well today? Nothing, daddy. You found the bottle, that's good. Why is that good? You know where to look. You went to lost and found corner, you found your direction, that's good. One day after the other. Every day, he's like, I didn't do anything well today. Did you fight with anybody? No, I didn't. That's good. <laughs> the other day, you do fight. Today, you didn't fight. It's good. Do you know we can change the direction of someone's thoughts and change the mood of somebody with our words? Amen? What if we were more intentional with our words? What if it's not just, why are you late? Can it be is everything okay? 
Same, I'm asking the same thing, basically. <laughs> but the direction of our thoughts, the direction of our feelings, the direction, I'm talking about direction. Is it moving in the direction of life or death? Amen? I don't always succeed. I fail sometimes too. I'm, I'm, sometimes I'm horrible with my words. I can be quite sharp with my tongue, but I'm trying to learn. <laughs> trying to learn. But we can all do it too. Amen? So it's not prosperity gospel. It's not witchcraft. It's not saying, speaking to being. Not the kind of thing it's like. But at the same time realizing, there is power. There is power. Asking my son, what, what, what do you do well today? The mood is very different than like, so Zion, do you fight with anybody today? Which was the question I asked in January, February, March. Because he used to fight every single day. Today, that, to, he, today, the guy he always fight with, he went to his birthday party today. And when we had to leave, because I had to leave at 2 o'clock to get here by 3 from Oakland Road, he was crying. Because, Daddy, I'm missing the best part, the treasure hunt. And then he asked me, Daddy, why must you choose to do church on Saturday? I'm like, whoa, what a question. How do I, how do I answer this guy? I just said, sorry, son. So sorry, we have to go. And this guy is the guy he used to fight every day. Until the principal called me. Today, best friend. Today, best friend. <laughs> so I used to ask every single day, did you fight with this guy again? Did you fight with this guy again? What's, what's that, what message is sending him? Like, oh, my daddy is trying to catch me doing wrong again. My daddy is trying to catch me doing wrong again. And not just father, child, church members. <laughs> hey, Vijay, you late again, ah? Huh? Are you a Vijay? You forget your part again, ah? Huh? <laughs> I know, small tweak, small tweak. Wow, Vijay, you hit all the parts except one. <laughs> you must have practiced really hard. A bit better, right? Then, are you? Small thing also cannot do. Can I ask us to be intentional? Hold back a little bit. Hold back a little bit. Amen? So, new eyes, new mouth. Let me move to new ears too. Because uh, to speak properly, we have to listen properly. This is not, this is not biblical about it anyway. That's because there's two ears and one mouth. Listen more, speak less. <laughs> it's not biblical by the way. But I, I, I suspect there's a reason why God gave us Two ears, one mouth. Can I stretch this analogy a little further that is not biblical? You must listen both sides. Because you can only speak one way. One direction. <laughs> not biblical. I don't know. It's interesting that God created us this way. He created us one big mouth, what? He didn't, huh? He made us two ears, nose, with two whole there, nostril. So, to have new mouth, actually we need to have new ears. Somebody say new ears. So, number three, the next part is... We need to listen before we speak or type. Listen before we speak. Proverbs 18 verse 13 says this, anyone who answers without listening is dumb. I'll just paraphrase it. And confused. You're confused because like, who, who told you you can speak before you listen? Are you confused? Like, what possible answer could you properly give if you haven't listened? And I mean, listen, not just hear. Airwaves, audio waves going through your eardrums. Not just that. It's what is that person saying? Not just through the words, but everything else. So anyone who answers without listening, this is the Bible. I love how practical and wise the Bible is. Whoever answers without listening is dumb and confused. Proverbs 17.28 says, Even a fool who keeps silent is considered wise. If you're dumb, and you keep quiet, ah, you're wise. <laughs> when he closes his lips, he is deemed intelligent. Ah, kalau bodoh diam. Then people think you're smart. This is the Bible. James 1.19 says, Know this, my beloved brothers and sisters, <laughs> uncles and aunties, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. Ah, you know how you can be slow to anger? Be slow to speak, quick to listen. Think about all the fights, quarrel, argument you ever had. And you slow it all down and you think, did it go through this process? It probably did. You got very riled up because you spoke too soon. Actually, if you slow down, you realize, not worth it. Not worth it. Amen? Proverbs 19, 10 verse 19 says, 
in multitude of words, sin is not lacking. The more you speak, the more probability you'll say something wrong. <laughs> but he who restrains his lips is wise. Proverbs 11 verse 12, whoever derides their neighbour has no sense. But the one who has understanding holds their tongue. Listen before speaking. Amen? Can I read this to you? The beginning of love for other Christians and other people is learning to listen to them. God's love for us is shown by the fact that God not only gives us God's word, He also lends us God's ears. We do God's work for our brothers and sisters when we learn to listen to them. So, so often Christians, especially preachers, think that their only service is always to have to offer something when they are together with other people. They forget that listening can be a greater service than speaking. Many people seek a sympathetic ear and do not find it among Christians because these Christians are talking even when they should be listening. One of the greatest service we can do unto others is to listen. Amen? Number four, we need to speak with words full of grace and truth. So, there's power in our words. There's a direction in our words. There's no neutrality in our words. Whatever you say, it goes one direction or the other. Amen? And we are accountable for every word. That is why we need to listen before we speak. And number four, we need to speak with words full of grace and truth. Read the Gospels and you'll see that most sinners loved being around Jesus. He spoke, with tru he spoke truth, but He spoke them with grace. Amen? And Jesus didn't just say nice things, yeah? He said, oh, let the bed bury themselves. Oh, if you don't hate your father and your mother, you, have, you can follow me. No, he, he spoke the truth. He spoke, some, he spoke some hard truth. But people still gather around him because he spoke those truths with grace and love. The people enjoyed Jesus' company. They sought him out. They invited him over to their homes and parties. Today, most sinners don't want to be around Christians. Don't invite them to do a party. Ah, don't, don't, don't. Unbelievers, they, they tore off the roof to get to Jesus. And sometimes they crawl out windows to get away from us now. <laughs> Why is that? What, what did Jesus show them that we don't normally do today? Grace. Grace. Somebody say grace. People sense that Jesus loved them. Even when He spoke difficult words. Amen. He was full of grace and also truth. Jesus says, that the Bible says, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen His glory and glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Words from a sincere friend are better than many kisses from an enemy. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of Him who is the head, that is Christ. We want to use words full of grace that edify others. Let us therefore make every effort, every effort to do what, it, what leads to peace and to mutual edification. I'm just letting the Word of God speak to you. Amen? Colossians 4 verse 6, Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 11, Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up. Ephesians 4, 29 to 32, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. What if... Every one of us believers took this scripture to heart and lived this way. If we truly don't let any unwholesome talk come out of our mouth, it will radically change our conversations, our online interactions. We will, if we do so, we will be like Jesus, full of grace and also truth. Amen? So, next... Um, so, just because speaking with grace is hard, that doesn't mean it's impossible. It's hard, but it's not impossible. We can do it. Amen? We can do it. Be wise in the way you act toward outsiders, 
Make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer every one. Hallelujah. Thank you for listening to the Generations Church Podcast. We hope you have been blessed by the Word of God today. Remember to stay tuned by subscribing to this podcast for more inspiring content. Do share it with your family and friends. Follow and tag us on social media at Generations My. For more information, check us out on bit.ly slash Generations My.